Hello everyone, it's Laura here, and uh, let me just get open the chat, as usual. We have another live stream coming to you today. Another page, where is this video? Come on, YouTube. Wakey wakey, there we go. <laughs> Okay, live chat is enabled. Hello, welcome, hello. Hi, Sahara. Thanks for coming. Sammy, oh my gosh, that was so much fun this morning. So, um, I'll wait for some people to get here, I figure, but um, just really quick, um, the reason why I started a little early, hi, Joe Beth is um, a little angel from our YouTube community sent us a webcam. So, thank you, you know who you are. Um, I don't like giving name call outs on my channel. I think it's, um, you know, but um, I did want to thank the person who sent us this. So what we're going to do is um, this will be the last stream where I will just be using my cell phone. Awesome. Yeah, I think I got it on recommendation from Belinda. I think that was who I heard about it from. So I have to figure out OBS and set it up, and I don't know what I'm doing. So you guys will have to pardon me um, while I figure that out. Hi, Shannon. But it shouldn't take me long um, to get it uh, going. So hopefully this will be the last stream where I'm using my cell phone. Hi, May. Um, we also got some other goodies. Right now you are um, checking out my work with an LED daylight lamp. lamp. So we also have that. So um, the channel got a big upgrade. So thank you so much. Um, everybody who supports the channel... Um, it goes right back to the channel. <laughs> so um, I, I really do appreciate all of the support. Um, so we are going to be working on this page again. Hey, hi, Darla. Let's see who else is here. We've got uh, Shannon. We've got May. We've got Sahara and Joe Beth. Hello, hello. Hi everybody. So, um, I don't know if you can hear, there's been some construction in the neighborhood. That might be a thing going forward, and if it is, there's really nothing I can do. I do apologize for the uh, noise and all that, but, um, you know, we live in a world, it's messy, and, you know, live is live, so we're just gonna... Hi Cassandra! Hello! Thank you for coming, guys! So I know we're a little bit early. I don't want to start too early, but um, I will kind of talk about what we're going to be doing today. Um, so we have, um, we started last week on the background of this page. This is, for those of you who didn't catch it last week, this is Villain Sun by Tomislav Tomic. And this guy, he is one of my favorite illustrators. He's so amazing. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I bumped the camera. Of course I did. Um, <laughs> so we have here um, a page uh, from this beautiful book. And um, we did the background last time. And we did it in Tombow ABT brush markers. So these... I love these for coloring books. The reason, one of the main reasons why is on double-sided pages, you can see there is absolutely no bleed through. It doesn't matter. You can put layer and layer. As long as the paper is fairly decent, it'll take it. Um, so that is one huge benefit of these markers. Now, um, I don't recommend them for large areas where you want to do a smooth blend. Um, but they work very well for texture and things like that. So that's what I used them for last week. We have a new texture coming up. Um, let's see here. 
just check in the chat. Hello, everybody. Hello, anybody who's not in the chat, but just lurking. I still love you guys. I just don't know who you are. <laughs> okay, so let's get... I know we're early, but let's let's get started. Um, so I've pulled, I think, four colors, which I think will work for this. Um, so my focus with these markers is just to to select, um, like with the greens, these are very jungly, natural greens that you could use in a lot of other applications. So what my goal is with this series is to use as few markers as possible, but to get a nice foundation for things like backgrounds. Um, so the, the focus on this particular episode will be on neutrals. So I've chosen, I think, four neutrals, and I'm going to swatch them here just so you can see. This is 992. This is a really light tan. So the thing about these markers is when they overlap, they do get darker. So it's not, um, it's not as easy to use as a Copic. But if you use them in a certain way, you can get a fairly smooth result for small areas. Um, so anyway, so we have 992, um, but that's, we're going to use those properties to our benefit with these backgrounds. So here's the sky here. So we have 977. And I'm on my third marker with this marker. That's why I'm recommending it because I use it all the time. So we've got that color there. And for our grays, now you can just pick one of these. That'll work. But I like having a light and a medium tone. These kind of like, they get darker and darker the more layers you put on them. But they dry slightly lighter like a watercolor. So what's cool is, so we have, I'm sorry, have, I'm sorry, that was 975 and 9, I mean a 9. N75 and N55. Oh man, I think it's because I just came off of a challenge. I am already super... Uh, <laughs> it's exhausting sometimes. <laughs> I don't know if you guys know, um, I did a challenge with four, um, well it was four of us, uh, with three lovely ladies um, just a little bit ago. And here, I'll put in a um, link in the chat. Hi, Heather. Okay, so we're going to get started today. Um, and the reason I chose these colors is because they'll work for a large variety of applications. Um, so I kind of just... Uh, I kind of picked what would work for us here in the moment, but it would also be a nice addition to any marker set. Hi, Darla. I think I said hi before. Okay, so what we're going to do, I'm going to start off first with the 992. Hello, hello. And what we're going to do is we're just going to... um. Just like how we knocked out the background in the last episode, I think what we should do is knock out the major um, base, if you will. We're going to go over it with color pencil later to give it more texture and detail. But by using marker as a base, especially for very detailed pages like this, um, it kind of just speeds up the process and kind of knocks things out so it doesn't feel so intimidating. And this is the reason I love using marker in the background of especially these pages here um, and why I like using markers for the frames in this book. There's a lot of frames like this. You can use these this type of um, method for just about any texture but today we're going to do wood so I've done another wood 
page. Which which page was that? I'm sorry, I'm going on a rabbit trail, as Dee Dee would say. One moment, let me find that page. Oh, yeah. So this was just Prismacolor. This wood here. And, um, but what we're going to do, this was much less detailed, um, you know, shape. So it was a lot easier to just use all pencil, but this here is a lot of detail. So we're going to go over it first with marker then shade some stuff with people, and then we'll go over it probably with paint. Um, so we're going, oh, that's great. What are you coloring, Heather? Okay, so let's see here. All right, so we're going to um, let's let's start off. I'm just trying to think here where I want to begin. Okay, I'm gonna start with nine nine two over in the corner. Let's see, did Heather say what she's working on? No. Okay, so what it, my main focus with the marker is just to kind of like block in big shapes and areas and that way it's less intimidating so all these little details I'm gonna kind of try and ignore a bunch of it as I start off so <laughs> that's easier said than done um, okay a little nerve-wracking doing this sorry for that background noise there all right so we're just gonna ignore Let's just do it. So, I'm not going to ignore everything, I suppose. See, can you guys see okay? I know that I should zoom in most likely, but I'm going to be moving quite rapidly around the whole page. Um, let's see. Heather didn't reply. Heather, what are you coloring? And, uh, okay, you can see. Oh, Shannon, you're doing another wedding. All right. Congrats. Okay, so we have... Um, let's see. I'm just trying to decide if the light is coming from this direction or if it's coming from the top. And I think I'll have it, for the sake of this, I'll have it coming from the top. So I'm going to fill that in too. So what that means is now for every shape, I'm going to want to fill in, let's see here, how do I want to, I have to decide where I'm going to put the shadows. So here on these shapes, I'm going to, and there's no right or wrong here. What I like about simple line drawings versus grayscale is that you really can pick any lighting scenario and it works. Okay. So that's going to pop out. 
So right now what I'm just focusing on is, is light and shadow and not worrying about the texture. Okay, let's see. Hi, Yvonne. Um. Oh my gosh, Sammy. I can't believe that. Oh, not congrats, Shannon. What happened? Why, you don't want to do that job? Um. Yeah, you're going to be red for days, Sammy. Oh, man. Yeah, I, I kind of am glad that I did mine, although it was, it, it was completely unraveling at the end. Um, anyway, I should keep going. I, I shouldn't stop and just chat. Um, yeah, mine, mine was completely unraveling at the end there, but... Um, yeah, at least I won't be stained. And don't worry, I'll use the toilet paper that I used for my costume as watercolor blotting paper. You know, like uh, blotting my brushes and... So I'll put it to you, so that's not the, I'm not going to throw it away. Okay. <laughs> um. <laughs> Hi, Melody. Hello, Natalie. Hello. Welcome, everybody. I hope you guys can see okay. So now what I'm going to have to decide is, since these shapes overlap, this item I think goes above all other items. So I'm going to shade it that way. Alright. here. Um, hi Cassandra. I think I said hi. I'm sorry if I missed anybody. Uh, I'm telling you, it, I'm not used to being in two streams in one day. This is definitely different. Okay. So now that I've established that, let's go in and just do this bit. So what's nice when you do this marker work is that it really does kind of calm down all those details and kind of like really show you what's important as far as light and darks and kind of where things go. Let's see here. Sorry, I'm not looking at chat. It's funny how with marker you really get in a flow. You kind of don't, um, you don't want to look up while you're doing it. And I think it's just you can't take it up back. Um, <laughs> so 
you can see already how it's starting to kind of pop the details and kind of give focus to certain things. Now, my trick with this detail work is just to kind of take a moment and look at it. Kind of see if there's anything that you may have missed. Very easy to do and very natural. By limiting your palette, it is easy to fix it though. You can go back because you know what you used. Um, so that's another trick with working with marker if you're doing a detailed piece. Just really limit your palette, at least initially, until you get things sorted out. Um, good morning, Starbucks. Thank you. Thanks, Natalie. Oh yeah, I'm fine, Sammy. I, I admit, though, I am coming down with a little bit of a cold. Like, um, I woke up, what was it? Uh, I think two days ago with a little bit of a sore throat. I've just been feeling a little off. But otherwise, I'm fine. <laughs> so... But yeah, wow, what a crazy stream. And you know, I'm not really good with horror images at all, so that was a real big challenge for me. Um, I think that was my first witch page. I think maybe I have colored another witch. Maybe. Somewhere along the line. Make sure I'm in camera. Oh, thanks, Rochelle. It was really fun. Um, everybody did. Oh, <laughs> Sammy, you're funny. Oh, Sammy, you did awesome, too. I think everybody did a great job. It's so much fun coloring with you ladies. That's so cool. So you see here I'm using the brush marker. I push down harder when I want it thicker. And I lift up on the marker when I want it thinner. So in this kind of thing, you know, people ask, like, you know, what's the secret there? It really is just practice. I would just grab a scrap paper. Go ahead and, and I can show you what I mean. So you can... Do a thin line or a thick line with this marker. And the whole trick here is to lift up and just barely touch the paper when you want a thin line. When you want a thick line, you're pressing down and kind of holding it more at an angle too. So you can hold it this way, this way. So by learning how to vary how you hold your marker and and the weight of the stroke you need you really get a, um, a nice sense of it and these markers um, what I do love about them is they're very consistent so from marker to marker the pressure is the same so once you figure it out unless you have a really old marker I found the older markers like the ones that are about worn out they kind of um, require less pressure, but I think that's normal. But yeah, they're very consistent. I really like the fact they don't bleed through the paper. And I'm not sponsored, by the way. I just like them. <laughs> um, I do love them, Rochelle. <laughs> hey man, things are coming. Oh wait, what, what, why is things here? Show. There we go. <laughs> hey May, 
Yes, you have seen me make art out of mud, although art is questionable whether it was art or not. It's funny. So much fun, though. Mate, I loved your crystal ball. That's the effect I was going for, but I was struggling to do that with crayon. I haven't figured out that trick yet. <laughs> it's so much fun, though. Um, let's see here. <laughs> oh, man, that's so funny. Yeah. The ladies all were witches except me. I was the weirdo who decided to be a mummy mummy. Which I know is really silly. So I used Crayola crayons and super tips. I did use a Derwent drawing pencil for the, the white. Um... The Derwent drawing Chinese white. I did use that. Um, oh yeah, that's right. I'm sorry. My bad. You were a zombie. I was a mummy. Then we had two witches, right? <laughs> Belinda and Sammy. I did see your flesh wound. It was amazing. Very, very well done. Okay. <laughs> so funny okay so now just to kind of give a sense of where this lives in space because right now the frame is sort of just floating on this white paper I'm not gonna worry about coloring the whole page or maybe if I do it'll be like a cream color but to get me started on tying in the frame to the background white I'm going to use the N75, not 9. <laughs> okay, so for this here, let's see. I'll start out. I like to start it out at the bottom. That way, if I mess up, it can be darker and it kind of makes sense. Um, yeah, you were a bloody scuffed up witch and Belinda was a hairy witch, yeah. With feathers, mm-hmm. Yeah, I think we had a fabulous, uh, I had a great time. And it wasn't a page I would ever have picked on my own. But I think that's the beauty of those challenges is like, same with the dino page I'm working on. Um, I'm doing that with Sammy and, um, Honor and bunch of other lovely people who have already finished. I'm still working on mine. So you can see here, I'm just sort of... Are we still good? You guys can see okay? Um, so I just sort of try and move quickly. And I'm using mostly a broad flat stroke here. And it just sort of gives it a little dimension. Uh, okay, good. Oh, good. All right. We're good. And whoever sent the light, I really appreciate it because it's still dark outside, but this lamp is making a huge difference. So, thank you guys. 
Okay, now we've got a bunch of bumpy stuff. This is this is the part where you need some patience. So what I do is I just get into a flow, into a rhythm with it and just try and kind of just pace yourself. <laughs> so up here we're going to, since it's mostly light up here, we're just going to highlight these little doodads, if you will. And we'll leave the rest for highlighting. Okay, so now we've got the mirror image. So if you forget where you want to put your shadows, you can just look to the other side, it'll be there for you. And since the light is coming from the top down, that's one of the most simplest lighting scenarios. I think it will work really well for this image because it's such a direct image. Oh, we've come around to the end. Okay, so what's nice about working on one thing at a time is I don't have to remember that color now. I've finished the entire surrounding, so now we can move on. Um, you know, I know a lot of people will work on one area and finish it up. I don't work that way with marker, instead I work all over all at once. Um, so you'll see, I'll just continue, I'll pick another detail or thing and then I'll fill that all in and kind of work around the page until it's all done. <laughs> it's kind of a, I know it might be weird, it might be hard to follow, but um, yeah, <laughs> this is how I work. So. Uh... Oh, well, that's all right. So, um, do you have any questions, Sahara? Like, is there something I could maybe help you with? I think some of it just comes with experience and observation. Um, but if there's something I can demonstrate, just let me know, because I'm happy to help out. Um, let's see here. Uh, which, what are we going to do now? I'm just trying to think, y'all. Uh, okay, I think I'm just going to go for it. Yep. Alright, so... A little bit here and there. Yeah, okay, cool. Hi, Belinda! <laughs> Thanks for having me on your show this morning. That was so much fun. Okay, so, so. And then the next thing that we're gonna tackle, I'm a little bit nervous about doing because I've never done this in marker before, but I think it will work out really well. So I'm gonna try and give it a go. Um. Oh good, Yvonne, you're not the only one either, huh? All right, I'm not the only one who works this way. So now what we're gonna work on is the wood grain pattern. So this is where you can get really artistic and kind of go whatever direction you want. Um, so I, I grabbed a scrap paper because it's really great to practice this. Actually, let's get a fresh scrap so I have more room to do it. So, um, when you're working wood green, what I like to do is just sort of use a wavy, sort of variated pattern and use a lot of swoopy kind of lines, right? So we can really get away with quite a lot here because the markers accept layering as a form of making them lighter or darker. So if you don't like something, just fill it in a little. It reduces the contrast. And 
so when you use a marker that streaks, just knowing how to use it for its texture. See over here, I'm really layering and it gets darker and darker. So knowing how to use the texture, and so if you're not sure exactly um, go get artistic. Well, you know, we're, we're just gonna, you know, you can, you can do it however you want. That's what I'm, that's what I mean when I say that, like, um, use your own ideas. You don't have to follow what I'm doing. <laughs> you can use the darker color for this, or, um, I'm going to use the lighter color to start off with and probably punch some areas up with the darker color at the end. Um, <laughs> but yeah, get artistic. <laughs> that should be a t-shirt. Okay. So I'm going to start at the bottom again. And what we're going to do is, again, I'm going to ignore all this detail except for areas where I want it to be rounded. So here's where we start applying our knowledge of surface texture. Right, so here's the one texture. So now what we want to do, if we encounter an obstacle, right, we kind of want to let's see if this will work. <laughs> we kind of want to go around it though and make it feel like there's some dimension there. So let's see. <laughs> this might be easier said than done. So I think for the purposes of this area, I'm not going to do that, um, but maybe over these larger flowers, for example, we'll work with something like that. Um, um, so here it's coming from the top. So the side of the frame, it's backlit. So the tiger will glow from the outline and be backlit but backlit from the top. So like this will have more top than bottom shade uh, light. But yeah, this this frame here is just lit from from the top. Hmm? Let's see. Oh, I'm so sorry you're in pain, Melody. Aww. Well, you, you are definitely welcome here, and I'm so glad that you're here with us. Um, okay. <laughs> oh, let's see, who did I miss? Hi, Joey. Hello, hi. Why do I always miss you? Oh, don't be sorry. Sahara, that's what we're here for. That's why I like doing the live streams. I can answer questions. That's the whole point. Okay, so let's stop procrastinating, Laura, and just go for it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to establish, let's do a big swirly right around there, I'd say. So let's start off there with that. This might feel weird to go right through. And you might want to wait until I'm done before you go ahead and do the same thing. Okay. So this isn't coming out how I imagined it. <laughs> But that's okay, because we do have the darker marker. The darker marker. So I think I'm just going to do this. So here, we'll see. We're going to save this. So we're just doing some wood green.
Okay, so it's really easy to get upset when something doesn't turn out the way that you hoped. Or to be nervous about it. Especially on camera when you're live. <laughs> but the thing is, is when you think about it in the long term, the mistakes are what help us grow and learn. So even if this doesn't turn out exactly how I wanted it to or how I imagine, doesn't mean that it doesn't have value. However, I think I can save it and that'll be a nice learning experience as well. So it's all in how you think of it and your attitude. And remembering that this is just the marker and we can fix things with color pencil. Okay, so let's see here. Hi, Susan. I'm sorry I missed you. Oh. Uh, who else did I miss? Miss. Brittany, uh-huh, hello, hello. Okay, I think I'm lagging. <laughs> All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ignore these top flowers and I'm just gonna do some scribbles. And what's cool is with the marker, you can really just scribble away. You know, it does not have to be perfect. I find actually the more scribbly it is for some reason, the better. Okay, missed a spot there. Okay, so we're gonna go all the way around. This does help define the areas that will go on top. And the more background wood. Am I in camera? Yeah. The problem with traveling around the page is that keeping it on camera is tricky. Okay, so now we're getting to the point. Where most of this Make sure I'm in. Oh man, your first snow, Natalie. Oh my goodness. I am not ready for snow yet. No snow, please. Oh my goodness. Not yet. I'm not yet. I can handle it in like another month, maybe. Just give me another month, please. <laughs> okay. So let's see if we can fix this up. So what I want to do now is just define the shapes better. Let's grab our darker brown. Um, oh, don't be sorry, May. Uh-huh. All right, let's zoom in now. Let's see if we can get these little details going. Yep. 
So now I'm going around the little shapes. Okay, and then I'm going to kind of highlight some of the areas. Sorry, I'm concentrating clearly. Okay, so now I've turned what was a mistake into something that's going to work, I think. So even if you think that it, it, you know, you're doing something that doesn't look right, my best suggestion is start at the bottom. You know, if, if this doesn't look good, I can always make it darker. <laughs> so if you start at the very bottom area, then it kind of takes some of the pressure off. Um, I started at the bottom in an area that's going to be darker. All right, so you start to get a sense of how this will look. Um, let's see here. Oh, uh, cool, all right. Yeah, you weren't expecting snow, huh? <laughs> oh, man. All right, cool, it looks okay. Awesome. So what, we're, what I'll do is I'll continue that same technique it's the same pattern here. I'll do this guy because he's different. All right. So all of these are exactly the same. So we'd all do that there. Kind of just take those black outlines and make them softer with the brush pen. This dark brown really does a lot. It's so cool. It's a great color. So um, I'll do the same techniques throughout that whole bottom section. So now I'm going to move on. And I hope that's okay. But I don't want to be too repetitive. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to tackle this box here. So this was another one where like it's right now I put in texture but there's no real definition so now we're going to give it we have to make some decisions here so I think I'm going to make this a scalloped kind of like embossed edge so we're going to give this a shadow and do we make those let's give this a little bit of a darker what are we going to do with these do we make them Shadow on the inside or outside? I think let's do it on the inside like this. So basically we're just taking this mess and kind of fixing it up. Okay, so for this guy here, let's give that big shape a shadow. And we didn't put anything on the inside of these, did we? No. Let me just finish what I'm doing here and then we'll think about. <laughs> My printer 
I just started. Man, May, all your talk of ghost stories. Now I'm all like jumpy. Why is my printer going off? That's kind of creepy. What's it doing? And Abby's, it's not Abby's fault, she's sleeping. Hmm. Oh man. Guys, did you hear it? It went off, I swear. Man. Okay. Well, we're gonna be fine, guys. We'll get through this. Um. <laughs> so let's swap back over. So we're, we were using 977. I'm swapping back over to 992 for a second, just to put some lines and a little more color in there. There we go. So now we're going to have to remember to do that to each one. And let's make this on the outside like that. So it's like a button. And we'll make a shadow on the inside here of these. So this has all, these are all choices that you can choose differently. Like, um, what's cool about these types of designs is that they really are open to a wide variety of interpretation. And that's, I think, part of the beauty of these types of pages. Um, so each one of these blocks I'm going to treat in the same way. So now I'm going to tr move on over. Let's do this section here. And I think this section here. And then I think that will sort of like complete the frame because it's all symmetrical. So you'll be able to adapt. So I think that's what we'll do. Um, and then the next episode... Thinking, guys, what do you think if we work on the tiger and the foreground in marker just to base everything out? What do you think? And then we can um, go from there. So I didn't color in these. I'm just trying to decide. I kind of like it all to be the same. I was trying to decide if I wanted it to be like a silver instead. But I think I'll make it wood. I think I'll make it all wood. Um. <laughs> Joey. Oh man, well that was the first time that ever happened, that my printer has never done that before. Okay, so we'll do, Is are you saying yes please to the marker thing? Yeah, we can definitely, um, so I'm just gonna stripe. And it's funny how you can just sort of get away with scribbling really. <laughs> Let's see here. Yeah, we've got to do.
Okay, so now it just looks like I scribbled all over that. Um, yes, Sammy, so what I did um, in my last video, if you'll see in the description, I put the colors that I used and I also put the book. And um, so I'll do that again in the description here. Just give me a little bit of time and I will update all of that. So let's make sure, yeah, you guys can see. Yeah, I chose the colors I did hoping that they would be really nice for a lot of different things. I, I use this particular brown that I'm using right now. I, I've gone through three markers of this already. And the other ones, some of them I haven't even gone through one marker yet. So that just tells you how much I use it. Um, so that's why I like this marker. And then the, um, the lighter brown, this tan color we used with it, I think it just works really well together. So... Now, of course, you can pick any browns. You can also use gray and do like gray wood. That would be really cool. Um, you can you can actually do just about any color wood by using the same technique of just scribbling the texture and then doing the shadow over it. And because they they darken as they layer, each layer kind of picks up what's underneath. So that's cool. Um, yeah, exactly. 24 hours is perfect. I'll be done by then for sure, Sammy. Um, oh, thanks for coming, Joey. I'm sorry if I missed you already. <laughs> yep. Thank you. Yeah, it's fun how quick the markers are and it doesn't look perfect but we're going to really have some fun with the color pencil but what what the markers do is it makes it less intimidating so now when you go and look at it um, it doesn't feel like a jumble of lines you know sometimes these really detailed pages can be very overwhelming I feel like um, and so by kind of knocking it out very quickly uh, you really do feel less overwhelmed and can sort of focus on one area at a time it's almost like a map you're just making a map for yourself okay let's see so you can see we're just sort of outlining kind of going finding all the shadowy shadowy spots where these shapes would be um okay <laughs> I hope you guys can see this okay so yeah we're coming up on an hour so let me just zoom out hi Sue how you doing so what we did um today we got fairly far considering so um, we, we did this section here, which we're going to repeat all throughout. We did this guy here, and we're going to do the same technique on all these blocks here. And we worked on this area, and I'll reflect that over there. So my homework um, before I come back to the next stream on this will be just to fill in what we did just with the um, 977. Um, and just finish that off. And then um, we're going to come back in and do some more work. So even though we didn't use this guy today, the fit N55, um, I will be using that. Um, so, the, But the colors that we used today, 
Um, it's funny, it seems like we're doing three stream. We did three colors last time. This time we used 992, 977, and N75. And these are all the Tombow ABT water base brush markers. Um, and so next time what we'll do is we're going to finish off the frame with the markers. So um, we'll figure out what we're going to do with the frame bits and um, we'll finish those that off with markers and we'll also work on uh, maybe just the foreground elements here because that's actually pretty complicated. So I think that's what we'll do next time and then we'll work on filling in the um, flying kitty cat with markers and um, we'll jump into pencils after that. So that's the plan. Um, thanks, Natalie. Yep, well, you know, it's funny. Um, it was voted on by the channel. So um, after this page is done, if you guys want to see another page, um, you know, in another series, we will vote on another one. So we'll just keep doing this um, every Tuesday morning. So... Um, and I may do another episode this week, but it might not be in this series. It might be, um, the gemstone series or maybe another lunch with Laura or something. Um, I have a couple of ideas planned, but we'll see what my week looks like. I have a lot of work to do too. So we'll, we'll see what I can get to. Um, Okay, I think that about wraps it up. Does anybody have any questions before we get going? Uh, before we go, I'll just give a shout out. Let's see who's here. Um, we have Melody, Natalie, Joey, Sammy, um, Starbuck. Thanks for coming. Sue. Darla, Joe Beth, who else is here? Hello, hello, I think the chat skipped a little. Thanks, Belinda, for coming. Hi, Brittany, thanks for coming. Uh-huh, thank you for coming. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Sahara. All right, I don't see any questions. If you do have any questions, just post them in the comments below. I'm happy to get to them. And um, as always, I hope you had a wonderful time with us. And um, have a wonderful, magical time coloring. Bye.